morning. Welcome to Mornings with Michael on a happy Friday to everybody. Um, we came down here to 67,314. We rock and rolled up to 68,666. And we have been selling up ever since. We'll just kind of update this price, see if we got any updates here. So a little bit since we last looked at it. And let's take a look at Ethereum, see where we are on Ethereum. Ethereum is a bit slow to come up here. Must be a function of the internet. Not sure why it didn't come up. That doesn't look good. Brings us to a shopping channel. And here's Ethereum. We kind of bottomed out down here below 2,480. Kind of rose up and selling off a little bit. Just kind of continuing to wait to see if Ethereum will have a breakout. We go to our word of the day. Our word of the day is urbane. Urbane is our word of the day. Courteous and refined manner, typically use of a man. So he was dressed casually, but his urbane, ur, urbane demeanor impressed everyone at the table. So that is our word of the day. Moving over to our S&P. Uh, Tesla is up another two points. He is up. Google, Media, all the semiconductors seem to be up. SMH for the ETF of the day. United Healthcare is up. And Schlumberger seems to let us go over a lifetime where you lose some place a portion of your money at least. It goes up when the market goes up. goes up again when the market goes up. Beats Index invests for new money. Feel free to reach out to me. And there's a number of that let us go over to our charts. Not sure why they don't want to come up. We'll try it one more time this morning. So I apologize for that. There we go. That was an interesting move today by this company. Let us go over. Not sure why it wants to come up. We're going to pause right here, get things scored away. We got things scored away. The dollar bounces. Up 0.27% this morning. Take a look at silver. Silver is trading in a pretty flat range. A lot of banks were shorting silver, so I guess they're kind of feeling the short squeeze right now. So they may be losing some money. Uh, we had talked about that maybe about six months ago that a lot of these banks could go bankrupt with a huge amount of short squeeze they got in silver. Gold. Um, being flat today, up 0.08 percent. Copper, it's bouncing a little bit, up 0.26 percent. Uranium, pretty um, flat for the day. Our favorite uranium mining company, pretty flat as well. And let us go over our commodity. Commodity is bouncing a little bit, so we'll kind of keep an eye on this because if things start to roll into commodities, they possibly could be roll, rolling out of the stock market. So let us go over to our bond yields. Bond yields up 0.33%. So after yesterday's sell-off, they're bouncing back. We haven't looked at the bond prices for a while. Yeah, they're selling continue to sell bonds. We got up here to 101.64 and there's been a big sell-off ever since. So the 20-year yield is up to 3.36%. We'll just go back to the 10-year. 10 10-year 10 is up to 4.21%. We'll just see if it uh, so it's 4.21%. 292, the previous high. So let's see if that clears that. They may be for some more selling into the small caps. Here we are at the VIX. The VIX is pretty flat for the day, up one cent, 
0.05%. S&P 500, I would assume, is up with the big cap techs up. Kind of bounces, gaps up 0.44%. Equal weight, I would imagine, was down from what we saw at the S&P 500 heat map. And it is. The NASDAQ is gapping up. All those big cap techs moving. And if we go over to the equal weight, it is gapping up as well, up 1.14% IWM. Tried to move higher and then sold off as rates rise. Dow Jones is pretty flat, off slightly 0.22%. Let's go to China index. It's up slightly today, up 1.26%. FXI, also in China, is up a quarter of a percent. So let us go over to our financials. Financials. Tried to move higher and then sold off. Real estate, we had that pocket of strength. They tried to move higher and sold off as well. Utilities, pull back to the 20-day. Communications, we've got a little gap up, closing is right near its low for the day. Biotech is bouncing a little bit. Same with the IBB. Look at SMH, up nearly two and a half percent. Compare that to XLY, see. It looks like SMH is going to be our ETF of the day. Health, so consumer staples are down. Healthcare is down as well. Retail is holding steady. Infrastructure slightly down. Airlines. Up about a percent. Leisure activities up about 0.6 percent. It's kind of writing that 10 day moving average, which is pretty healthy. Home builders are down. Home build construction, pretty much the same thing, almost down a percent. We got transports up slightly today. Industrials pretty flat. Software got a little bit of a bounce in software. Technology got a gap up there. That's a nice gap up, up 1.3%. So there, that's what we have today in the world news. Russia's central bank raises key rate up by 200 basis points, 21% from 19% versus estimate of 20%. Um, October UK GFK consumer confidence negative 21 versus consensus negative 20. Consumers are in a despondent mood despite fail, falling headline inflation this month as painted a picture of people holding their breath and waiting to see what's in store for them in the October 30 budget. The Wall Street Journal reported that Elon Musk has had conversations with Vladimir Putin. Reuters reported the Kremlin on Friday denied a Wall Street Journal report about regular contacts between Elon Musk and President Vladimir Putin. No, this is not true. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters, Peskov said Putin had one contact with Musk, the world's richest man, and it was before 2022. Oh, I don't know if you can believe anything that they put out there, but the journal said Musk has been in regular contact with Putin since late 2022. Peskov said the report was absolutely false, according to Reuters. So that is the story there. I'll try to move this. We moved it a little too far. Adjust the news, and we're back over the chart.
to Consumer News, Boyd Gaming, quarter three, EPS $1.43 versus consensus of $1.38. We got a gap up on Boyd Gaming, huge volume. Earnings came in at 12% year over year quarter. Boston Beer, quarter three, EPS $5.35 for actually selling off, but then bouncing back. Earnings up 15% year over year quarter. Pretty flat um, for the day. Capri. Shares tumbled overnight after a U.S. judge blocked the pending $8.5 billion merger of U.S. handbag and accessories maker Tapestry. So that is, wow, off nearly 48% for the day. That is painful. Tapestry, a victory for the U.S. Federal Trade Commission in an industry, the FTC argued at an eight-day trial that the merger would eliminate Fierce head-to-head -head competition between the top two U.S. handbag makers create a massive company with power to unfairly raise prices for consumers. And Tapestry gaps up nearly 14%. What is Capri's loss is Tapestry's gain. On to Comfort System Fix. Quarter three EPS $4.09 versus $3.97, even though they beat and earnings came in at 49%. A lot of people were expecting a lot more. It's down to about 11.7%. Deckers is having a good day. Quarter two EPS $1.59 tops consensus of $1.24. We got a gap up of 11%. Earnings up 39%. Mercedes will step up cost cuts after earnings halved in the third quarter, hit by tepid demand and fierce competition in China. Said on Friday, the luxury car maker cut its full year profit margin target twice during the third quarter, joining a number of European rivals blaming a weakening Chinese car market for falling profits. Mohawk, not sure if we got um, if Mercedes came up. Well, I guess this is a foreign stock. We can't really take a look at that. And Mohawk Industries dropped 12%. Quarter three adjusted EPS $2.90 versus $2.89. Revenues came in at $2.7 billion versus $2.7 billion, pretty flat. They anticipate recent hurricanes will negatively impact quarter four sales by 25 to 40 million. So maybe that is why we got the sell off there. Sketchers, quarter three EPS $1.26, tops consensus of $1.15, and tried to move higher and then sold off. Up 1.87%. Texas Roadhouse. Quarter three EPS $1.26 versus $1.31. And you would think it would sell off, but no, it gaps up and surges higher, up 3.57%. Uh, revenues of 1.27 billion. Comparative restaurant sales increased 8.5%. At company restaurants increased 7.2% at domestic franchise restaurants, sees full year comparative restaurant sales, and sees full year 25 capital expenditures, 400 million. On to energy, industrial, and materials. Joby Aviation announces 200 million common stock offering. Got a big gap down. A lot of times people do not like to be diluted, and that's what's going to happen here. It's off 15.22%. We're just going to adjust the news once more. We got a local company level three, which is an estimate of $3.26. Level three, Harris Technologies, have an office in, right nearby in San Leandro here. And a gap up 3.39% and 5% increase in quarter over quarter, year over year quarter earnings onto Olin. Quarter three EPS negative 21 cents versus, oh, did not clear out the previous one, um, versus estimate of four cents, and you would expect it to drop. Earnings fell 118%. So, yes, it did drop on to Weyerhauser. Weyerhauser. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Quarter three adjusted EPS five cents versus one cent. Uh, it is selling off initially and trying to fight back off 0.93% on to financials. Morgan Stanley said James Gorman will step down as chairman to retire 
at the end of the year as expected and tried to move up to 120 and then sold off of 2%. Arthur J. Gallagher, quarter three adjusted EPS $2.26 versus estimate $2.27, selling off 2.3% right here. Earnings in, up 13%. Big Capital One Financial, quarter three, adjusted EPS $4.51 versus estimate of $3.70 and gaps up on that news, up 6.61% on 1% increase in their earnings. Digital Realty, quarter three, AFFO a share, $1.67 versus $1.66. And look at that jump on one cent difference. It's up 11%. That's pretty amazing. Pretty big volume. Volume increased 756%. Moving on to Hartford Financial Core 3 EPS $2.53 versus the mint. <clears throat> Excuse me, $2.54. So they missed, and it sells off 6.61%. McGrath Rent Corporation, quarter three, adjusted EPS $1.87 on sales of $266.76 million. A big gap up. <clears throat> and I have a little drink here. I got a frog in the throat. Gaps up and um, is near the upper range of its gap up 9.12% today. On to principal financial group, quarter three adjusted EPS $1.78 versus consensus of $2.02. Yeah, you would think that would be a big drop, and it is down 8.21%. Earnings up 2%. Continuing on to healthcare, Dexcom shares fall, quarter three adjusted EPS $0.45 versus $0.43. Cents. They initially sell off and then bounce back. They're pretty flat right now. Um, Bouncing between negative and positive. On uh, to Edwards Life Sciences down in the Silicon Valley area. Four to three adjusted EPS, 67 cents versus 64 cents. Uh, off 0.72%. Um, quarter three adjusted EPS, 67 cents versus 64. And they see quarter four EPS 53 to 57 cents versus 62 cents. So that's maybe why they are selling off today. ResMed board one adjusted EPS $2.20 versus estimate of $2.04. It gaps up on that news, up 7.67%. On to United Health Systems. Wow, look at that gap down, down 9.41%. Adjusted EPS $3.71 versus estimate $3.70, losing almost 9.5% today. I will look on to technology, media, and telecom, starting off with Apple. Apple was downgraded to underweight from sector weight at KeyBank with a $200 price target, saying the firm's consumer survey disproves one major bull case that the iPhone SE is not purely additive to iPhone sales. In addition, the analyst cites data points surrounding U.S. iPhone upgrades for the downgrade. By the way, my wife just got a new brand new Apple phone yesterday. So we're a 3% in quarter three, down 9% year over year for Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. Expectations call for Apple's highest growth in three years and a major inflection in all geographies and products, which has rarely occurred throughout its history, condensed key bank. As such, they say, the firm feels Apple shares are expensive relative to its history and its peers. So they're much above 200 right now. So we'll have to keep an eye on Apple, which of course we will. Appfolio, quarter three, EPS $1.29 versus estimate of $1.03. Gaps up, and that has a big sell-off as it clears a 200-day moving average. Still, it's up 11% for the day for Sarah. Quarter three adjusted EPS, 10 cents versus estimate of two cents. Um, you would think it would move up on that news, but nearly a thousand percent gain in earnings per share, but no, it sells off. It's off 8.67%. Revenues came in at 167 million versus estimate of 173.98. 
expects expense reduction initiative to generate at least 30 million annualized structural cost savings. On to Rogers Corporation, quarter three adjusted EPS 98 cents for this estimate of 85 cents. Initially sells off and bounces back up 1.47%, 29 versus $1.26, a big gap down on that one, down seven and a quarter percent. Software has a high valuation, so if they don't um, really surpass their estimates, a lot of times there will be a big sell-off. Western Digital shares jump, quarter one adjusted EPS $1.78 versus estimate of $1.72. And this one gaps up on that news, earnings up 201%. That wraps up our news for today. So let us go over to our daily routine, find out what is up 200%, 200% in volume and 10% in share value. I think we may have looked at Decker's, so many that we kind of ran through. Decker's gaps up 10.42%. They got that famous shoe out there that many people are wearing. Uh, Digital Realty Trust up 10.86. Yes, we looked at that one. Tapestry, you looked at at Folio. Daco New Energy, China-based company manufactures and sells polysilicon to photovoltaic product manufacturers. Gaps up 15.36%, 430% increase in volume. You can see that right there. And then finally is Jinko Solar. Gaps up, up 10.58%. It's trying to clear its 200-day moving average. Go over to what's up, 5%. Well, we got 30 items here. I think a lot of them we probably already covered. Bruce Hamilton was not on our list so far, then, but that is up almost 10%. Earnings came in and increased 40%. International general insurance gaps up 5.68%. We got I and Q. Quantum computing. I wish I had put in a price um, alert here. Look at that big move. It's up another 6.3%. Check in um, another one that we looked at earlier. It's not on the list, but it's holding up pretty good after this pretty strong move above, I guess, 50, 76 would have been the breakout right over here. Aon, oh, this is insurance. Yeah, England-based insurance gaps up. Earnings came in at 17%. KB Financial Group gaps up today, up nearly 8%, 22% um, increase. South Korean Bank providing commercial and retail banking. We looked at Capital One Financial. We got Nurex Therapeutics. Got a strong move out of this little tight area. This is kind of what we like to see set up. Up 5.83%. Looked at Resmed. We looked at Boyd. Discover Financial Services gaps up and is on the lower part of the space, up 5.5%. Vista Energy. Strong move. Came up here to 52.47. Pulled back below its 50 day. Bounce back, pull back again. This is a double bottom. So once it clears 50.42, that would have been the buy right over here. It's up 6.31% today. Nebius Group is a Netherlands-based company providing infrastructure. So maybe we should put this in an IPO. We'll add that to our IPO list. So look, needs to work on an IPO base. So what is the IPO base? IPO base is 16 to 25 days in length. So we got one, two, three, four, five days so far. So we got a little ways to go, but we'll continue to watch this one. Uh, we have Oppenheimer. It's moving out 53.53. Be the breakout. Hasn't quite hit that yet. You can put that on alert. It's up 79%. Although on this one, this is a double bottom right here, 4877 
and then it falls to 47.39. What is the middle? Double, so 5108, would it really be the buy point on this one? Um, and it has cleared that one definitely today. If you had put in your buy right there, you'd be in this stock and you'd be happy. You'd be at a nice little profit today. We looked at McGrath. Um, we looked at Western Digital. Uh, here we go with Zeker Intelligent HR. Got a nice move there. China-based company develops and offers driven solutions. It's up 21% today. A massive move, a recent IPO. So imp hinge. Nice little bounce here. Sell off on average. We looked at DQ, look at Gentex. Got a gap up and raise. Manufactures automatic dimming rear view mirrors, electronics, and garage door openers for the automotive industry centene. Um, managed healthcare provider. Had really big sell-off here. Looks like they're trying to fill this gap here. Let's see if it comes down here and then trends higher. Viking Therapeutics continues its advance from yesterday. Big move up. We looked at that polio onto SIA in transportation. Big bounce off as 50 day, sold off once it hit its 200 day. I continue to watch this, see if it can clear the 200 day moving average. Uh, Fitel, see if that'll come up. Fitel, Austra Australian online retailer of gym and fitness equipment under proprietary brands and other brand names, is up 27% on 198% increase in volume. Uh, Maybe you want to keep your eye on this one, and it looks like it has definitely cleared the bottom there. We looked at JKS. I think we're almost through all the thing. Air test system. I guess I gave up too early on this one. I had an um, option on this for two months out, and now it looks like it's clearing that. Um, came back to the 200-day moving average, and it's clearing that previous high. And rounding out the list is Donald J. Trump, Media and Technology. It's had quite a rise, had institutional ant right here. Pulled back from the 200-day, and now it's cleared the 200-day, up 10% today. So that is this. We got Elf Beauty, up 2.33% today. We'll see if this can tighten up and stay above the 20-day moving average. It did hit 116 um, and pulled back. Came back up here and pulled back once again. So we got a tug of war going on here on Elf Beauty. Celsius. I like this tight range right here. We'll see if it can get any buying volume. It's off 1.39% today. American Super Conductor. Is up 1.46%. See if this can tighten up and get above the 10 day moving average. I do have options on this one. Or I believe in sometime in November. I'm like your strategy in six, five days has earnings coming out. It's up about 1% today. I do have 42 shares of this in my Roth IRA. I had sold all the rest of the options I had on MicroStrategy in my other account. And BitX. And interesting. Pulling back here a little bit off 2.69%. I had tried to sell some more options around 35 and the price just declined. So I kind of pulled that off the table. We'll keep looking at that and see if that's a viable option. Keep you on the up and up on that. And that kind of rounds out everything for us today. This has been Mornings with Michael. We had a great week here, and uh, we, we just want to keep it rolling. Hope everybody is having a great week. Oh, before I go up, I did neglect to look at a big cap tech stock that is, they're all, see, so looked at Apple. Take a look at Amazon. Amazon is peaking up a little bit, up 1.21%. Good, Mr. Softy, Microsoft, 
scalping up. Eli Lilly, pulling back a little bit. Nvidia, it's kind of bouncing here up 1.37% today. Meta is gapping up today, up 1.31%. Forgot to look at cores in the Bitcoin area. Sells off and bounces off the 10 day moving average, off 1.02%. Google looked like it had been kind of setting up with the tight moves. It is moving up today, up 1.27%. Not sure if we looked at Eli Lilly or not. And we did. It's pretty flat. And uh, just trying to think if I've missed anything. And I can take a look at Fang Yu, see how that's setting up. Tried to move up and then kind of sold off when it got up to here. This is a triple hedge um, ETF, so it has a lot of risk involved in it. And the other one with a lot of risk is LabU. It's up slightly today, up 2.67%. Just can't recall if I got touched on it. everything. Look at ABGO. Got a gap up on Broadcom today. And I think that's where we'll end it. Please tune in on Sunday for a weekend update. And we will keep you informed of what's going on with the markets, economy, and whatnot. And we appreciate your tuning in. Keep working on your goals and your activities. If uh, we can help you with any of your financial goals or activities, please let us know with a comment and and comment if uh, there's anything in particular you'd like to see or hear. We're always aiming to please that way. So go out there and make a difference. Happy Friday to everybody. And we will catch you on Sunday. Have a great day and a great weekend.